Hey, hello. I, hello. I can hear, I can listen to it all day. That's so good. Uh, okay. Well, welcome to the comics Aussie Indie Comic Review. Uh, and this is where we look at the current and classic Aussie Indie titles, whether it be a standard one shot, part of a series, or a graphic novel. And we hope to enlighten you about its contents as well as its creators and see where it takes us. If we go off topic, who knows? Well, we might all learn something new. <laughs> That's well, that's that's life, you know. What 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 is life except a series of off topics? True, true. Uh, so before we start, please like and subscribe to Comics so we don't miss out on any of their comic related content, um, which should be coming back in a big way. I, I, I'm assuming uh, after a little bit of off hiatus, a bit of a break. Yeah, well, um, some of it has already been trickling in. Uh, the um, that 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 new series where they're creating a comic book panel by panel with each episode. Mm. I saw the first one. Mm. That was very that. good. That was yeah. And you get both the conversational elements of your regular podcast, but you can you can also see the creative elements of mm. of our craft and see it come to fruition in real time. It's yeah, it's so good. All those little ideas sinking in. Anyway, well, mm -hmm. I'm Danny, and this is Max. And today, Max, you've you've picked the, this uh, this episode's uh, title. So, do you want to start it all and uh, introduce this week's comic? So, this week we are looking at a transhuman issue one, written by our friend and colleague Stephen Cock, who also goes by SK. Uh, he was. Uh, a perfect uh, letterer for Stellar Lands, given that we both have an affinity to sci-fi and badass female protagonists, <laughs> as it, was, it becomes very quickly obvious within the first few pages of Rivka's story. Uh, well, well, first off, we open in a very, very uh, in-your-face action sequence with um, you know, military lingo and... Uh, really brash kinetic panels and w within uh, that action we are introduced to the main character and essentially what she's capable of and that's what the best action sequences do especially within you know the first uh, you know, the, the 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 first instances the first moments of their craft mm mhm mm yes um i i'll have to uh agree that it does start off crazy with a uh, wallet yes yeah i thought oh, okay what's going on here but then um it's quite a bit of a story to this uh, the um the plot the subplot that runs through it is is it's quite complicated and quite clever yes I, uh, and you told me that it's actually a setup for the other books but whereas i found it very enjoyable as being a complete story by itself. Yes. Uh, well, just the dwelling on the story, I mean, calling it Rivka's story is a bit of a misnomer because there is another dual protagonist by the name of Robert, who uh, we, we also see his motivations uh, come into play and we also see his character get uh, developed very, very vividly. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we see these two narratives intersect and we see their competing motivations uh, collide in the, the most action-packed way you can imagine. Now, on, on one side, we have we have Rivka, who herself is a transhuman, mm -hmm. someone who uh, lives by the graces of augmentation. She's uh, mm -hmm. got enhanced vision, speed, all of the, uh, the, the physical aspects that make humans human but even more human even in the sense of its uh, and we, we have to stress uh, that this is yeah. not something that uh you know science gone mad it's it's actually she is a war hero she's she is a uh ex member or is she still a member of the israeli defense force yes um, and she was involved in a wartime accident accident very selfless um yeah uh, an yeah. act of selflessness led to severe injuries which uh necessitated the uh augmentation of cybernetic devices which uh, led to her being capable of these uh 
superhero feats which we uh, see within those pages. Uh, and, and and that's what I, I, I liked about that part because then we get into the whole her personal story with the daughter and also yes. the religious side of it. So yes. this then, is classic. Uh, science and religion, yes. Twin narrative. You know, religion doesn't understand the science and the science has no patience for the religion uh, and it, it, it's clever I, I i especially the the fact that uh she's been made enhanced because of what happened to her and then what happens to her child um yes can't be fixed because of uh you know without giving too much away uh a, a more of a genetic thing so it's yes it's well, that i, I don't think I think we could dwell on it. It's not necessarily a plot point as it is a, a piece of character development. Mm. But yes, she has um, a child who is born with uh, severe genetic deficiencies, Tay-Sachs disease. Mm. And she carries that guilt of having passed on those, you know, quote unquote, rotten genes. Uh, yeah, to, uh, yeah, to, to, to her off, to her spawn, to her offspring. And, I believe that um, later informs her uh, decision making into like sort of almost improving her genes, improving herself on a cellular level. Mm. It's just that, yeah, she couldn't save her daughter. But mm -hmm. uh, the, the irony of it is the fact that she was augmented, she saved someone else's daughter with that selfless act. And, yes. and then what makes it even worse is what happened to her could be fixed and made her better it was just, it, it, and that's what you're talking about when it comes to the the whole uh, uh the guilt that she feels and uh yeah, and yeah she, that's it, that's one way to that that inner strength which makes her probably you know the perfect soldier yes yes no that's one that's one way to look at it and on the subject of uh, perfection we have the the other side of of the debate and there is a, you know, there is a, a literal debate in the comic books between mm. both Robert and Rivka's respective uh, mentors, uh, who I believe aren't given a name. They, they're just referred to as the professor and the preacher. Yeah. Is that correct? Uh, yes. I'm just looking at, 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 uh, okay, Robert is, is our, our ex-soldier who's just come back from and seems to have no idea what he's doing he's, he seems to be lost even though he has his family i'm just trying to see if it i think they just call him the pastor or, the preacher yeah mm -hmm. yes yeah. The, yeah, yeah the preacher and the professor they do have a, a televised debate mm -hmm. and uh where they verbalize a lot of the themes of uh, you know the the dialectics of uh science and religion in in robert's case he uh he, he is from a faction called the purists where humanity is defined by its how much it is divorced from uh, augmentation, but you know that that's that, that's tricky in itself. I mean, where do you? There are questions of where do you draw the line. I mean, uh, Danny, you you wear glasses. You know, I, I wear glasses. I was as well. say, augmentation is yeah. a crutch. Uh, you know, a, a crutch. Uh, it, it's it glasses. It's a hearing aid. You know. Are you a cyborg mm. then? Danny, right. are you, are you, are you, yeah, your, your, your hmm. visuals are enhanced. Exactly. Yeah, here I am, you know, with my bionic vision. <laughs> yeah, you, you would be an assassination target for the purists, you know, especially, uh, yeah, in, in, in Robert's case. And Robert, we, we get, we get to see his own motivations with uh, his own family. He's struggling to uh, provide for them. And uh, somehow that, uh, Puts him on a on a course with uh, the uh, yeah the, the militant uh, preacher, mm. uh, who um, yeah who who in in the 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 pages of the of where the debates happen he seems to be denigrating a lot of uh, the, the motivations behind uh, the the professor and uh, yeah yeah in that way it it visualizes that. Um, yeah, the, the the crux of of the whole, you know, the, the, yeah, science and um, yeah, religion dynamic, which has been uh, yeah very much um, explicated within 
on the news, you know, quite a bit, you know, with, with stem cell, everything from stem cell research to, to uh, yeah, to, to even uh, the, the primordial uh, versions of heart surgery. I mean, uh, surgeons weren't allowed to uh, tamper with the human heart and the belief that it was sacred. And uh, of course, we have Pope Leopold, who was condemning, um, yeah, uh, Catholics from taking um, the vaccines, uh, the smallpox vaccines, and the belief that it was going against God's plan. And mm. we have all the weight of this history just just crushing uh, yeah, this uh, this dynamic, which is personified in um, both these characters as well. Yeah, we, we still see it today in some major religions. I know the Catholic Church have come around a fair bit, uh, but the um, uh, that the Seventh Day Adventists and the the Mormons, uh, the Mormons definitely uh, won't allow uh, blood transfusions. Blood transfusions, yeah, mm -hmm. crazy, crazy, right? Crazy stuff. Yeah, uh, okay, I never figure that out. Um, would you would you say that this that um, Stephen's book, in a sense, does it does it cast judgment? On either part of the, either side of this debate, I I, th I think the um, uh, the religious side of it is uh, a, a bit more. I think he he seems to be going towards the, the scientific side. I think he, he leans more favourable towards that because that seems to be the more level headed. Um, whereas uh, yeah, the, the, the logic and the religious. Like, you know, so you hear the word fundamentalist, you automatically think, oh, yeah, cuckoo. Yeah. But not yeah. really, if you, if you have a belief, uh, you know, things take time to change. And uh, and sometimes people just need something to focus on so they can get upset, as we've <laughs> social media has, has, has shown us. Yeah. I'm just looking at the debate now. Um, I've got the, uh, the PDF open. Yeah, it just seems to be, you know, so angry. And of course, uh, whenever you get fundamentalist, you get zealots. So that, you know they're always going to be the ones who are going to, you know, if you're not going to do anything about it, I could end this argument quickly with violence, and and that's that's what happens here. So. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. In in that sense, both Rivka and Robert are deep personifications of of the debate. You, one could almost say that their characters are co-opted with how they represent each side of the debate. Mm. Yes. Uh, but the, the trouble with Robert, I think he he, he goes too far, and um, mm -hmm. and then you have uh, where you, at, at the end you got uh, Robert does his what he does, uh, but the, uh, the 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 preacher kind of you, you see, I think the the sympathy goes back towards the preacher because he may disagree with. Um, argumentation, but he still has a conscience about what's good and what's mm -hmm. what's right, you know, good and evil, uh, you know, forgiveness, and, and that comes through at the end uh, in the climax, so, or the, the semi-climax, because I, I think the, uh, the the ultimate climax is the resolution of uh, Rivka herself with her personal life. Because yes. That's the sub, the subplot that runs through the... Yeah, it's, a, it's a complicated little... Um, uh, comic book if if you know it's 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 more than just bash bash fight fight you know splash yeah. screen it was actually, not that there's anything wrong with those with those with those comic I, books i mean you know it's actually a well-crafted and well-written comic book I, yes I, and it's I like it. very well paced mm. both sides of the debate get equal weight and not none at the expense of the others the yeah, motivations behind each character are clearly delineated and their respective mentors are neither deified or demonized. No. Which, yeah, no. which is great. I think, no. um, I think we all that. live in that gray space, and that's what makes everything more interesting. Mm. Uh, and, and, you know, it, 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 it does carry a lot of emotional weight, too. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking here, and because there are the, the subtle color changes um, when uh, the, the tragedy of uh, Rivka's family and uh, also... Her uh, selfless act that caused her to be augmented. Um, you know, they, they're actually very emotional, and uh, yeah, and I think whoever did the colours did a, a great job. Of, um, well, the, um, the, the the art I know is Chris Pitcairn. Are you familiar with that name? Oh yeah, he he, he pops up everywhere. No, um, hang on, what have we got here? Oh, Chris did. Oh, yeah, okay, there you go. He did the colours. 
Alan Sands did the art. All right. Okay, so uh, yeah, so Chris Pitcan, uh, he's he's done a fantastic job of uh, of doing these colours and and, and portraying uh, the emotional impact of of, of those scenes. So uh, yeah, he's, he's done yeah, well. Yeah, the action, yeah, the action definitely, and 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 the panelling and the, every everything moves along at a brisk pace as most of the comic books we've reviewed to this date have. Uh, mm. there, there's a certain um, harnessing of, of pacing and uh, the temporal elements of uh, yeah comic books. Everything moves swiftly along. Mm. It's a common denominator of what, what makes a good comic book. Yeah. Right, uh, right. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, you said that, uh, you know, of course, you, you're the one who presented this comic. I know no nothing more than Rifka's story. Can you tell us any more about where it's going? Or no, what? no, no. I, I actually have yet to read the subsequent issues, and yeah, maybe that's for the better because it it helps keep our reviews isolated and yeah, more focused. Oh, well, that, well, yeah. what I'm more saying there is where can uh, they find uh, if anybody wants to to read this? Oh, um, right. Continue on. Uh, sorry, that was me being a bit vague, but yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. No. No. That's fine. That's that's my fault, of course. But um, but uh, the uh, uh, it's being distri distributed um, both issue one and two, I believe, in comics two movies, which is uh, yeah run by uh, Stephen and Sean Keenan, who I had the pleasure of meeting at the Metro Comic Con in Melbourne, and um, the uh, part two was uh, recently finished. It had a very successful. Uh, Kickstarter campaign where they were able to meet their pledge goals and then some. And I believe issue three is either in the process of its Kickstarter or that's just further down the line when it's going to be launched. I believe it it's on uh, notify notify us. Uh, it, it, it's it's yeah. It, it, click click here for notification. You know that page. Mm -hmm. On uh, on the Kickstarter, I, yeah, I believe it's uh, it's on that um, stage right now. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, there's some yeah gorgeous artwork and yeah, click to stay notified, which I have summarily done. Oh, cool, cool. All right, well, uh, well, that'll be it for this week. We we've, we've got to keep it short. Um, uh, I found this comic to be quite. Quite engaging, and I'm, and I'm glad that Max told me about it because otherwise I, I didn't even know it existed. It, um, which is probably my fault, but uh, there's another good reason why you should watch these comic shows, um, like uh, Drink and Drink and Draw, because that's when a lot of these Kickstarters get told and you know get announced, and you know, or somebody knows somebody and and lets them know and uh it, it really does pay to keep in touch and then you you, you come across little gems like this yes and uh, chinwags in particular they go they go really deep into um the biographical densities of the artists and yeah it, it's, it's it's just amazing hearing artists talk about their art which is why i have a certain preference for that show when it you know when it resumes mm. oh i, I Lee's fantastic. Uh, I, I remember when I, I was on it, uh, I, I had the pleasure of being invited on, and an hour and a half went like 10 minutes, and I was just telling stuff that I forgot about. Yeah, he, was, <laughs> he just has that ability to uh, draw you in. And, uh, yeah, and a lot of stuff gets announced on that show as well. All right. Well, thank you, Max. Uh, until you, next week, um, we will have another one, and I will talk to you about that. Off screen. <laughs> okay. Great. So, yep. Yep. So, yeah, Great. Well, Grab a copy of, of Rivka's story of Transhuman. Take care. Like, share, and subscribe. Thank you very much.